Hey everyone, welcome to Studio Sunday. And uh, I'm kind of flying solo today because we're recovering from a 20 hour travel day yesterday back from Paris. And uh, we just spent two weeks in Europe having the time of our lives. So this first week we were in Italy. We went to Milan and uh, Bologna and uh, somewhere else and did signings uh, for our publisher, Bao, and had a great time. The people are so kind. And then we uh, took the train over to Lake Como and did the Lake Como Comic Art Festival. Um, it was incredible. It was an all-star show of some of the best illustrators in the world. And uh, I got to meet Milo Minara and uh, all of our, my American buddies were there. It was fantastic. Uh, this, I can't even, I, if I started a roll call of who was there, you would not believe it and I would forget someone. Look it up on the website. It was an incredible show. Beautiful art. And of course the setting is just, it's like heaven on earth. It's, it's like you died and went to heaven. And there's these beautiful mountains and this beautiful lake. And oh my gosh, pretty place. A very pretty place on the planet. So it's perfect place for the uh, show, for, the, for an art show. <laughs> a lot of artists walking around uh, really appreciating the scenery, I guarantee you. Uh, from Lake Como, we went to, Robin and I went to Paris and spent a few day, days there. And we did this for a reason. Uh, which was the uh, Alphonse Mucha exhibit that has been going around the world for the last five years. Um, and I, some of my art is at the very end of the exhibit showing uh, the influence on today's artists. And there were uh, a few artists represented there that uh, uh, openly um, embrace and love the style that Mucha created uh, almost single-handedly and uh, I, I got to be a part of that so it was the honor of a lifetime and I'll tell you more about that but behind me on the table uh, this is what I brought home <laughs> and I'm unpacking today so I thought maybe you'd like to unpack with me and see what I brought home uh, from Lake Como and from France so let's change the camera angle and take a and unpack this together okay so if you've ever met me at a con, you recognize this bag. This was the drawing stuff that I took to Lake Como because we wanted to do some sketches there as well. As well. Not just take art, but do sketches. So there's my little drawing kit of stuff. Um, here is the... I had taken some pages, a few pages of art uh, to sell to somebody, anyone in Europe that doesn't want to pay all the shipping fees. So we came, we had, we didn't even fill the portfolio. We just took a few pages that Robin thought were unusual. Um, I think she did have a couple of pages that were pre-sold and we we hand delivered them. So, um, you know, the, the usual folder full of comic art. And then of course there was the um, folder of sketches that I had tried to do in time. That was the pad I was drawing on. What's at the back? It's my scratch sheet. Okay. Oh, I came back with a beautiful copy of the this new Rocketeer presentation with an Adam Hughes cover. Very cool. And um, this came with the the DVD of the um, uh, documentary. So I've seen this documentary. It's wonderful. It's so interesting. And I'm going to watch it again. I actually still have... a a Blu-ray player. Ha! Huh. Uh, that's okay. Don't be jelly. <laughs> You'll have to watch it online. Um, these are the sketches that came home. No one bought them. Um, I think... Yeah. For some reason, the Francine sketches did not sell. Anything with dark hair did not sell. Isn't that weird? Uh, all the Cachoos sold. But Francine, Kelly... Uh, even the Wonder Woman that I drew at the show, uh, none of them sold. Um, so, and the Casey that was inked did not sell. And I was only asking like, you know, $10 each, something like that, $15. Um, couldn't give it away. I tried to give it away to people that were walking by and they spat at me. So, yeah, welcome to the life of the artist. Um, 
Let's see, this stuff here, this is from our Italian publisher, Bao, I think. Let me see. These are prints that uh, are left over from way back in 1998, one of my early trips to Italy to promote Strangers in Paradise. And some of the, these signed and numbered prints are um, were left, they were not given out. So we don't want them to go to waste. We're gonna put them on the website and put them up for sale on the website, you know, like $20 a piece or something like that, right? So yeah, I brought these home for you. I put them in my suitcase so that you guys could get one. Um, that's also the situation with, oh, this. They also gave us this, the little black and white one that goes, that was a little handout thing for that too. Um, so I brought a bunch of these home. The small one and the large one from 1998. So it's, these are like brand new, it's amazing. Okay, uh, and uh, Christoph, from Germany brought me ink. And you guys, you all know how expensive it is to ship anything across the ocean right now, especially a heavy bottle of ink. So I wrapped this in plastic and put it in my suitcase and carried this heavy thing home in my suitcase. Look at that. the top cover off. It made it home. Look at that. That's not a, that's tight. But there it is, a, a, just like a absolutely full, uh, pristine bottle of vintage Pelican drawing ink, hand delivered by Christoph from Germany to me. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And so we have that one, and we, he also brought the smaller one, the mini-me. So I also have a mini-me bottle. I don't know if they came in the same deal. I mean, look at that. And both of them, absolutely full. It's never used. Okay, I think I'm set for ink now for life, okay? <laughs> I, I have this, and then uh, over in the cabinet right there, are, I probably have four other bottles that were gifted to me from uh, like Tony and Todd. And I mean, gosh, people have been so generous. You guys, thank you so much for keeping me going. Um, I, I would rather have ink than brownies, trust me. <laughs> okay, let me get this out of the way. And show you. Okay, um, so from, oh, last thing, the Lake Como Comic Art Festival um, book that came from it. I have not opened it. So let's take a look. So cool. Uh, do a little bit of short points so you don't cut anything on the book. Plastic wrap is heavier in Europe. Okay. What do we have? You open it up and you get portfolios by the artists who are attending the show. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. This is the kind of talent that was at that show. Unbelievable. Vivatori, Manara. And these guys were just, by the way, just so you understand, these guys were there and they were just walking around. They were sitting next to me at breakfast, lunch, and dinner and just strolling and looking at the lake and easily accessible uh, to uh, the artists and the collectors that were there. Uh, Momoko. And there were um, artists from Japan, Singapore, 
it was, oh, I don't know who this hack is. And Simon Beasley was there. He was working across from me and he was working furiously the whole time and he had a blow dryer so that he could paint and the blow dryer was running all the time. Like that. It was a very, uh, uh, very strong presence. Mike Grell was there. Yeah, all these guys were there. Jenny Frieson. Uh, Frieson? Frieson? Um, she's really a nice person. Uh, we met her and her husband um, because we were often sitting next to them at, at meals or whatever at the hotel. The small hotel we stayed at was just a very, very short walk away. Oh, Sonia was there and I got to meet her at last. Um, gosh, she's such a terrific artist and she was a wonderful person to meet. I highly recommend her art. Uh, Jorge Fornes. Uh, octopus. I saw octopus uh, sitting in a tank uh, at a sushi place in Newark Airport. First off, I don't think we should be eating fish that is smarter than us, but so it was really sad. But second of all, never eat airport sushi, okay? <laughs> That's my dad advice to you. Uh, Tula was there. Look at that. Ricardo Federici. That has a, a um, uh, road warrior aspect to it, doesn't it? I don't know who this person is. Lupicino. Very good. Zoo or Zoo. Gorgeous. This looks a little bit like David Mack. Perel. Oh, that's beautiful. Gosh. Well, this girl's clothes don't fit. Poor thing. And Kevin Eastman was there. He was so nice to everyone. Um, really a nice man. He was there with his family. Sean Murphy, super, super, super talent. And stuck in the very end here, Deloto. Yeah. I mean, we can end on that. I mean, that's just incredible. You can even see the uh, buildup of the paint right there. Isn't that cool? Okay, so this was the book of prints that was available and uh, there at the show. And that gives you an idea of how good that show was. Those are the artists who were there. So it was, um, it was not intimidating to be there. It was just a sheer joy to be there, um, if you know what I mean. It was just, I was so glad to be there with those people and see them all at once without the interference of... Uh, toys or movies or actors. It was just artists. Thank God. Thank you, Steve Morgan and Frank Cho and everybody who puts on this show. It's incredible. Okay. Now, I saved the best for last. Oh, well, let's... Okay, one last thing. I stopped at my favorite art store, Sennelier, and um, got... Actually, I didn't find much of anything I wanted at Sennelier. I think I got some pencils again. And I always buy Faber-Castell pencils. So I got an array of pencils to draw with. But, um, and I got this new pen holder here. Isn't that cool? It goes back like that. So I've never seen that before. I liked it. And uh, I got that home. Save and sound. And also, I, I found a sharpener that I cannot find in America, which is a long point sharpener. So that, you know, when you use a regular sharpener, they're short and stubby, and your point is short and stubby, and it wears out immediately. You want to use longer uh, points for your art when you're drawing. And so I finally found a, a long point sharpener. And if you can't find one of these, then one of these two-stage sharpeners will work, too. Um, Black Wing Pencils makes one, but here's another one called Long Point. You put it in the left one first, and uh, it pulls away the pencil, the wood, and leaves a longer uh, piece of lead showing. And then you put it in this one and it sharpens the lead into a long point. And it, that's really good for drawing, especially when you're doing facial facial work and things like that. So I got two long point sharpeners. Oh, look, it is black wing. <laughs> oh, well, put on me. Uh, and, the, and then also, I stopped by the Moleskine store. Oh, I got this one. Did this make it? Yes, this made it home safe and sound. I love this. I found this at Sennelier. It's just a long, super long point with a very delicate um, handle. 
So I wanted to try to get it home safe and sound. I put it like this and that. And I can't believe that the ink made it home and these fine points made it home. So cool. Okay, this thing I got from, you can probably get this in America, I'm sure. This goes like this on your moleskin, so that if you really are out and about uh, sketching with, like at the park and stuff like that. This is a highly complex procedure. You need to be trained to do this. There. So now you have that, and you have a little zipper here for your, um, that's where you keep your Empire money. And then a little pocket here. You can put uh, a sandwich in there. You could put a banana in there. You could put probably a one, one a really short half liter of ink in there. Yeah. I'm full of bad ideas. I know it's bulky, but when you're traveling and you want all your pencils with you, um, this is ideal, so. All right. Let's, now that out of the way, let's get to the big reason that I love the second part of the trip. MUCA. Um, about a few years ago, the MUCA family in trust, um, and MUCA is um, his great, let's see, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, his great-grandson, um, <clears throat> his great-grandson has put together, and the family, and the trust that is involved around the MUCA um, uh, paintings, they put together a show uh, that has been traveling the world and hitting major cities. It's only hit like six major cities or seven, like it started in Tokyo, and it's ended in Paris. And it will be in Paris until November 5th, so you can go to the show. But this book is from the opening show in Tokyo, and it showed, yeah, they sent me a copy. Um, it just shows uh, the work of Muka, and it's a retrospective of his life and his work. And there's an immersive 3D stuff that goes on in the exhibit. And you you guys know all the posters. You're familiar with this, right? Um, if you've uh, ever studied art or smoked marijuana, you know Muka art. <laughs> if you've ever looked at uh, concert art, concert posters from the 60s and 70s, they were very uh, Muka influenced. And now uh, a lot of manga is influenced. So when this show was running in Tokyo, um, they really focused on that uh, Muka to manga. Um, so now <clears throat> it came to Paris and it was at the Grand, uh, Grand Palais and uh, it was an immersive show, like I say. And we went, Robin and I went, and there was this beautiful, there's Marcus, this great grandson. Um, he's been so kind to talk with us and work with us. You walk in and there is this massive um, video presentation, 3D video presentation. And um, look at that, it takes over the whole room. And it's just gorgeous. You're blown away by it. And then they have, uh, there's a little, a few scenes where they have uh, real actors recreating the moments. This one, both of them moved me to tears. Um, I really had a lump in my throat when I watched this because to watch the beautiful imagery match perfectly to the painting. Um, and then th this young actor did such a great job of conveying the angst that was in the, in the original painting. Oh my God, it was just incredible. Um, and then it goes on to talk about his influence on modern art and design and how it spread from his era to our era across the years. Um, the man was an absolute genius. And it wasn't just that uh, popular uh, art, art Nouveau phase. He went ho uh, home to Prague and began painting these wonderful uh, paintings of his country's story, the, the story of the Slavs and the Slavs and the, um, the epic of, of building up the country um, that he's loved so much. So, um, so there's a history of his life, his art, and all that in there, photography.
and these uh, he used uh, his wife and family for poses for these. One of the first guys I've ever heard of who used um, photo reference, which is why you're seeing, you know, stuff like that. Um, you, you know, so that he could get all this right. I don't know of an artist before his time that was able to use the camera like that. They would go out and take pictures of fields and marvel at them, but the reproduction quality was terrible. Um, you know, he worked all the way through the teens and 20s and 30s and uh, passed away under unfortunate circumstances in the 30s. These paintings are huge, by the way. This, is, this painting, the figures are life-size. Uh, when you stand in front of the work, it's on the walls of these big buildings. These figures are life size on big walls. There's an there's an example. That's how big these things are. Unbelievable. I mean, I mean, the vision and the talent is off the wall. There's there hasn't been anyone like him. And then when you get to the uh, end of the exhibit, you get to a section where they show um, artists of today working um, in the style, in the, in the Art Nouveau style. This is a famous um, Grateful Dead poster. This was the cover to the uh, cigarette, the cigarette wrapping paper forever. When I was in high school, uh, and marijuana was everywhere, that figure was everywhere. And it so influenced me. Um, I'm trying to get this so you can see it, guys. Look at that. Matsune. Akimi Nats Matsune. Ninja. Eligarzai. And very political, a lot of symbolism and in, in, uh, mean, deep meaning. India, um, or uh, not India, the Singh twins. I need to read that. That's almost Persian, isn't it? Gosh, I cannot wait to just pour over this. So, there you go. Our tickets to come in. I kept that because... I was so happy to be there. And I wanted to support, so I didn't walk through the um, gift shop at the very end without buying something. And it was just amazing. I, it was the thrill of a lifetime. So, highly recommend two things. I highly recommend the Lake Como Comic Art Festival. Uh, if you're ever in Europe, time it out so that you can go to Lake Como, one of the beautiful places on the planet, and go meet all uh, some of these in most incredible artists working today. And I highly recommend you check out the story of Alphonse Mocha, who is the grandfather of so much modern comic illustration and just illustrators in general and painters. Um, and he has a fantastic story where uh, a man who loved his heritage and did something about it in art. So there you have it. That's my European trip. I'm going to go home. I mean, go to bed. <laughs> I'm going to go home and sleep now. So, and then tomorrow, <clears throat> tomorrow I have to start uh, on Parker Girls number eight and I have to hit the road, hit the road running. All right, guys. Um, that's my report. That was my trip. I'm really happy I went and um, I had a great time. So thank you everyone for your generosity. If we encountered each other on the, uh, on the trip. I see a spot where we missed the making a hole there on the background. Um, so, yeah. Bye. See you next week.